Exercise 5. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at a non-planar parting line, and we're going to use the SOLIDWORKS mold tools for this. Now, in the manual, it does go through a method of actually creating this using the old technique, which is very time-consuming. But in this case, I'm going to skip through that. Maybe I'll make that video later on a later day. But um, the SOLIDWORKS tools work really well on this particular model. As you can see, it has a very uh, has a non-planar parting line. So let's take a look at how that's created. I'm going to begin by opening up the part file. And here we can see it. And you can see it has a lot of complexity within it. Uh, the party line isn't as complex as all parts, but it's, uh, it, it basically just gives you a non-planar. It's a simple non-planar party line, actually. Uh, they do get a lot more complex than this, generally. We're going to start by going up to the top here again. Make sure your mold tools are on by right-clicking, activate mold tools on any of the tabs. Then select the mold tools tab. Go to insert mold folder. Then go to party line. And for this, I would suggest just select like a flat face anywhere that would give you where it would be typically parted. So like I'm there, I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit draft analysis. And we could see uh, where there's draft re required and we should put some in. Um, in this case, I'm not going to bother with it, but um, just be aware of that. Now, when it's a non-plater parting line, you have to go down here to the parting lines and specify where you want it split. So we could select this edge, but we're actually better off selecting this one. I think we're going to select that. And you'll get this little propagate along tangent faces or edges. Go ahead and select that. It should propagate all the way around. In this case, this is a very simple model. I've tried in other models that are much more complex, and it doesn't always work that easily. So just be aware that that is not always, it's not always going to, be the magic button. A lot of times you have to go back to the traditional methods to kind of trim and cut away at the material. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark and it should generate my parting line. And now click on the shut off surfaces. It should identify all the edges and we look good. We're going to go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. And now we could go to the tool and split. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, the parting surfaces. Click on parting surfaces. And you'll start to see that same parting surface that we saw in exercise four, which is fine. And I'm just going to extend it out about 15.20 millimeters. Then hit the green check mark to apply. Finally, go to the tooling split. Now, for the tooling split, because it's a non planar parting line, you need to draw it on a, on a planar surface. So, find somewhere a planar surface or a plane itself that runs through there somewhere. In this case, this surface works out really well again. So, I have a nice flat surface. And I'm going to go through and select these edges. Now, usually you could right click and select loop or select tangency. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't working for me on this. I'm holding control and I'm just selecting the edges. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Convert Entities, which projects it onto my plane, as you can see there. Once you're ready, just turn off Exit Sketch. It should automatically go to this. That's where it splits the cavity. And now you can add your additional material for your water lines or whatnot. And hit the green check mark to apply. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off these... Uh, transparency option here. And I'll hide these just by right clicking on those curves. You could find a little set of eyeglasses to hide. And now if we go to the solid bodies right here, right uh, hit the little plus symbol there, and you'll find your tooling splits. You could right click on any of them and go to isolate and preview what they look like and then you bring them into an assembly or separate model configurations. Whatever you want to do, there's different options for that. And there we have the core, and here we have the cavity. And that concludes exercise five.